Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to share um, a really cool approach for finding uh, the angle between two lines. Um, and so, you know, you're given these two lines either on the coordinate axes where you're able to like pick out a couple of like points by just looking at them. In other words, you have like points that are not dubious as to where exactly they are. That is, you have lattice points. So you have a visual of these two lines or, you know, the equation of these two lines. So that's what we assume before you could implement the strategy that I'm going to talk about here. And also like, um, yeah, so my two most frequently used um, fonts are ST Peng Song and Zinkai SC. I loved them for a long time. And then like, just uh, kind of like to uh, try something different I went with this and like some fonts are I guess a little like too fancy to be practical I almost feel this way about um, this specific font but a really random side note <laughs> okay uh, let's get back to what I said we we're gonna do angle between two lines right so that's our x-axis that's our y-axis let's say that um, one of the lines has that point and the other point is uh, 0 comma 5. So uh, we've got the line subtract the coordinates of A from the coordinates of B, right? And also because it's a bit cumbersome to write the vector AB, let's just call it the vector U. Okay, cool. So the vector U, we're saying we can find its components by subtracting the coordinates of A from the coordinates of B in this manner. And when we do this, what we're doing is we're putting the vector AB in standard position so that its initial end is at the origin. Uh, in other words, uh, the vector U, which is the vector AB uh, in component form can be written this way. And what we've done in writing it in this way is we've moved it from where it's at right now so that it starts at the origin. That's what it means to have a vector in standard position, that its initial end is at the origin. And that's what you're doing anytime you take two points and subtract them to um, figure out the components of the vector you're just relocating that vector so that it's anchored at the origin yeah okay cool 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 so um that's the vector u and obviously since this is about the angle between two lines we need another line right so let's say that the other line is uh, line cd here and again on line cd which just like line ab goes on forever we've identified a vector and the vector here in blue uh, let's call the vector V and just like we did with the vector U uh, we subtract the coordinates uh, to figure out what this vector V looks like component wise and it turns out that it's going to be um, 8 negative 3 okay cool so you see that if you're given two lines uh, what you could do is identify two vectors on the two lines and this is of course for the purpose of finding the angle between the two lines but yeah you can create two vectors on the two lines by basically figuring out two points on one line and then subtracting the coordinates in the manner that we have done and doing the same on the other line now notice that the length of these vectors does not matter for the purpose of finding an angle between the two lines so you can pick the two points on one line say as close as you want or as far apart as you want um, knock yourself out whatever it is that you feel like doing but the angle that we want is say that angle theta right there that of course is the acute angle formed by the two lines where we'd say that the obtuse angle is over here obviously if you can find this angle theta then you can figure out this uh, bigger angle right here between uh, the two lines right so all I'm saying here is that there are technically uh, two different um, types of angles that could be formed when you have two lines meeting an acute one and an obtuse one right um, and on one specific case, uh, they could both be perpendicular. Um, and so both angles could be um, neither acute nor obtuse. Uh, that's like being too specific in my mathematical analysis for a simple question. So let's um, keep going. So, well, relatively simple. Okay, so now uh, notice that the equation of the two lines are this for line AB and then this for line CD. Notice that for line CD, I didn't care to figure out the y-intercept because for the purpose of what I'm about to communicate, we don't need to figure out the y-intercept of the lines. All we need is the slope of the lines. And you should already see what's happening. If you look at this and then look at this, and if you look at this and look at this, that is, if you look at the components of the vectors and the slope of the respective lines, you should see what's happening. 
what's happening is this. If we call the vector u, uh, u1, u2 in component form, then notice that u2 over u1, right? u2 over u1 is the slope of the line that contains the vector u. Uh, that is, u2 is 7 and u1 is 3, 7 over 3, u2 over u1 is the slope. Yeah? Okay, so what I'm saying is, if you found it laborious to identify two points and then construct a vector on the line through that way, then what you could do is, if you can know the equation of uh, the line in slope-intercept form or in any other form, you could just figure out the slope of the line and then see that u1 over u2 in this manner is going to be the vector that you're going to construct on that line. So in other words, you can very easily construct a vector on a line by just taking the slope of the line and then writing it in component form as a vector where you lead with um, the denominator of the slope first. So that's the u1 and then yeah, you get it, you get it, you should get it. Otherwise, ask questions and I'll answer. So I've said enough. Uh, u2 over u1 is uh, the slope of that line and and no surprise than that uh, v2 over v1 is the slope of uh, this other line, right? And so we can get at the vector v by looking at the slope and just writing in component form this first, the x component being this and the y component being this. And of course, it should not come as a surprise that in the vector component form, the x component would be the 8 and the y component would be uh, the uh, negative 3 because, well, this is rise over run, so the rise is the y, and the run is the x, yeah? Okay, okay, you should have seen that without me having to explain it, but it's all good, it's all good. I was happy to. Okay, now, where to from here? Let's make space and stay focused. And what do I mean by stay focused? I mean, well, let's recall that in many other videos on vectors, I discuss many things about vectors, everything you need to know about them, in fact, um, starting from vector arithmetic, through the dot product and cross product and lots more. And when I discuss in um, those videos, when I discuss the dot product, I explain to you not just how and why this formula is what it is, but also how to derive this formula. So check out those videos on vectors. They're in pre-calculus and in multivariable calculus sections. Uh, but yeah, check them out and you'll learn lots, everything you need to know about vector. But we know that the dot product is this. And notice that from here, we can divide both sides by the length of u times the length of v. That's what this is saying. Yeah, we divide both sides by this here, and then we can isolate cosine theta. How nice, because since we know our vector u and our vector v, forgive me, I forgot to color code v, but I noticed that I forgot. So did I really make up for it? Maybe, maybe, but yeah, forgive me uh, for not color coding this blue. It's blue, use your imagination but we've got u and we've got v, right? So then we could do u dot v. We know how that goes. This is u dot v, right? Also, the length of a two-dimensional vector is fairly straightforward. We just take the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared, right? That's for u, and for v it goes very much um, the same way, and so this is the length of the vector u, and this is the length of the vector v. And so those are what are gonna replace this fella and this fella, and therefore this fella and this fella clearly u dot v is going to be replaced by 3, right? So then putting all this together, that is making all these substitutions, we see that the cosine of theta is equal to this left-hand side. Now, if you're doing things correctly, the cosine of theta cannot be less than negative 1 or um, more than 1. We can clearly see that this is between negative 1 and 1, and so no worrying, right? And so the only task that remains is to take the cosine inverse of both sides of this, I'm not much of an arithmetic guy, as I've said in previous videos, so I'm not going to do the computation for you, but if you do the cosine inverse in your calculator, and in this case, I can't tell you anyway without a calculator, but yeah, if you do the cosine inverse of this in your calculator, you'd be able to figure out what this angle theta is. Yeah? Okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed this. Lots more to come. Keep watching. Take care.